Well, hello there. Thank you for staying with us here on the AM show. We want to bring you some election petition updates, conversation around what happened uh, in court yesterday. What has happened in uh, recent days, really, with regards to this particular matter? How about all the unanimous decisions so far in the ongoing case? Our election petition update here on Joe News is in association proudly with Petrosol, also DBS Roofing and Coa Mixture. My guest is Director of Legal Affairs with the National Democratic Congress, the NDC. Abraham Amalaba is here. Good morning to you. Thank you for being here. Good morning and good morning to your viewers as well. Mm, great. So first of all, what's the mood in the camp of the petitioner and then also the NDC? Why do you ask this question? What is the mood? <laughs> Why? You've heard that the mood is bad or what? The mood is still what it is before we went to court. We are still upbeat. Um, you know, we are being led by a senior counsel, lead counsel, who, whose resolve and persistence can never be broken by decisions that go against him. Chachichikata is one person who believes in procedure. He believes in the rule of law. And above all, he believes in justice. So these are the three considerations that continue to motivate him. So if a man of his age, at that age, can be on his feet for close to two to three hours, just addressing the court, if such a person is not disillusioned, who am I to be disillusioned? So we are taking our inspirations from him because he thinks that we must get to the bottom of this matter. He also thinks that we should explore all avenues available to us under the law and under the rules of law. And so that's why the applications have been turned out. Yeah, but you went in the, into this process. I remember we had a conversation the, very, the week uh, this case was filed. And you were quite very positive. Is that still, is the confidence level still very high? Because we kind of see the end of this case in sight, don't we? So you should be careful not to be seen uh, making comments that would prejudice the case. What do you see? Uh, you, you see something I don't see. Aren't we? The question was, we're, getting, we're that... getting close to the end of the matter, aren't we? So yes. I'm asking. Are you still as confident as you were in the first week before you filed this process? Yes, indeed. There are two courts here. There's a court of public opinion and then the Supreme Court that we are in. And you see, this is not just purely a legal case. This is a political legal case. It has political connotations, political considerations. But what's the underlying issue? You're challenging the validity of a presidential election. Yes. And so was the issue. And I'm saying that Because you say it's not a purely Yes, I'm saying that it has issue. I'm saying that it has political consequences as well. You can't run away from that. And so we are resolved in our minds as the legal team to go in for the full haul. I have received messages from our supporters and members saying that we should withdraw. In some of the newspapers, you see that we should pull out. Your members are also, some of your members yes, are also saying you should yes, pull out? Yes, yes. I have received messages. Why are they making those suggestions? Well, Is it because it's, you've it's, lost so many of the applications? It's, 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 it's left to them to, uh, they are watching. They are also judges on their own, so they, they know what they, they, they mean. But we are saying that we shall stay in there, we shall stick in there till this matter comes to a, a final conclusion. We are, I've told you that we are not perturbed about the rulings against us. What we are interested in is to ensure that justice is served, the people of this country. When the petitioner went to court, he didn't go to court only on his behalf. He went to court on behalf of the over six million people who voted for him. But it's interesting that some of them are saying that he should pull out, that's what withdraw I'm, the petition. That's why I'm saying that we are those leading the case in court. And we are of the view that 
being the leaders, we will stick in there to the final conclusion. And so that's what we are doing. On Monday, there's another application. Yes, we will so get there. Um, we would continue to explore all the avenues, and uh, we are not going to shy away from doing that. Yes. Once the law allows us to do that, we'll do it. You raised an issue, and I'm curious about it, so if you can explain. You say it has political consequences as well. Can you share? Oh, yes. That, you know, is uh, what led us to the Supreme Court was about the elections that ended uh, on the 7th of December. People queue to vote. Those people are watching the proceedings. Those people are interested in ensuring that uh, justice is done, or they would expect that justice is done. So as they watch, they also form their judgments. And that's why I'm saying that being a legal matter, it also has a political undertone. And so that's why I, I describe it as political legal matter, the petition in court. So Ghanaians who killed on the several of December are also interested and desirous of coming to terms with the fact that how come that two months after the elections, we still don't know the exact figure for the total valid vote cast. That is something that a lot of Ghanaians will want to know. It has never happened that in an election you go and you come out of the elections and you still don't know the total valid vote cast because this figure has changed like five times. And for me, this is what the Ghanaians are interested in knowing. About six rulings so far have gone against you. I think you, you managed to unanimously get the panel to agree to the corrections, uh, making some uh, corrections in, in the main petition initially. But after that decision, every other decision that has followed, the interrogatories, uh, the inspection of documents, um, admission of facts, we, we just went into a review yesterday and that decision also went against the petitioner. That's a lot of unanimous decisions against the petitioner. How does that make you feel as, as part of the team? No, we've, that, we've disagreed with all the rulings against us and uh, anytime we come out to speak, we show our disagreement. We still believe that, for instance, the interrogatories could have been administered because it, had, it happened in the 2012 elections. So regardless of what the ruling has been, we are still in our resolve that those rulings were wrong. It is the highest court of the land, so there's nowhere you can go again mm -hmm. in, in, uh, within the country to want to you know, change what they have done. So we live with it, but we feel strongly that that decision, particularly to administer interrogatories, was wrong. Indeed, yesterday's ruling, where we also talked about the fact that the decision not to allow Jemensa to take the witness but was per incurium, and the fact that it also goes against the Supreme Court's own earlier ruling of, of, of in Adamu Sakandi's case, of where the Supreme Court indicated that in the interest of justice, the witness must take the witness box. We thought that that was a proper ruling. So in the interest of justice, Jemensa should have also taken the witness box. But the ruling has gone the other way. But we still believe in our case, and we think that you are saying the case is getting an end. So let's wait and see what Well, I'm, I'm not even saying it. The Chief Justice yesterday did indicate that after Monday, uh, or on Monday, he would give a date for judgments. I'm just a phone away from you. Wait when the ruling or the judgment is given. You can call me back here for us to talk about Oh, that one, yeah, absolutely. Those, those you, you don't even have to give me permission. So, I certainly so, will call so, you. But for now, it will, it will be premature to begin to see and talk about what will happen. No, we're not talking about what will happen in the end. Mm -hmm. I was just saying that we started at a certain point and the confidence was very high. I was just trying to measure the kind of no, level that, yeah. where you are if you're still confident in this no, case that the, you took to court. Within the legal team, we are still a bit. That's, I can assure you. That's why we are not redrawing the matter. That's why we are still stick in there 
And that's why we are exploring all the avenues available to us under the law. And that's why these applications are coming in. Do you think your followers understand what you are dealing with? Do they understand the ruling so far, the process where we are? Are they able to interpret it well, do you think? I can tell you that what our, our, our supporters don't understand is why is it that Jim Mensah will not take the witness box? Because for them, in 2013, they saw Afarijan in the witness box. So they thought that as well, Jim Mensah, who is the only return officer, should take the witness box. That's, uh, the, that's the only decision they don't understand. Okay, like but I hope that you're able to explain to them that the court says you haven't given them a good reason why that no, should be. No, we disagree with that. We disagree with that. We don't tell them that because we disagree with that. It, if you go about saying that, it means that you accept that that is the case. We don't agree with that. So what is not sitting down well with them is why is it that the person who undertook the exercise on the 7th of December is refusing to take a witness box? Because this is a woman who indicated that she declared the results in accordance with law. And so what will be taken away from her if she enters the witness box? Why is it that she does not want to take the witness box, and yet there are indications that she intimated to the whole, to the whole of uh, this world that she would take the witness box. Her affidavits, she gave the impression to the whole world that she was going to take the witness box. For her to now do a 360 degrees turnabout, that she will not take the witness box, is a clear indication that she has something to hide. So what our people are saying is that, look, we now agree that Jim Mensah engaged in acts that suggest that she was in favor of the MPP. That's why she's running away from the witness box. Because if you have nothing to hide... Wouldn't that be a wrong interpretation? If, if, and don't if you, you have, have a responsibility to explain no, no, the no, matters no, correctly no, no, to no, your no, no, people? No, no. In fact, because they clearly, with that view, they no. don't understand what's playing out our, in the courtroom. Our people know that if you have nothing to hide, you don't run away from the witness box. They, they know that as a basic fact. So our people are of the view that it should have been in the interest of Jim Mensah herself to be eager to enter the witness box to tell the people of this country how transparent the process was. We've heard from the parties indeed, also from your party. When I say party, I don't mean the NDC, but the parties in this case, that they are working with strategies. If it's the Electoral Commission's strategy not to elect, as you lawyers say, to adduce evidence, they don't want to put their witness, Jim Mensah, in the box. That's their strategy. I mean, what, what's, what don't you understand by it? It's a strategy, isn't it? You also have your own strategy. You your, say you're going, your, to, your, you're going to use all legal means. You're going to um, go all the way out with all the available means legally uh, provided in this matter. You want to absorb all of them. Nobody has a challenge with that. So why do you have a challenge with somebody else's strategy? Your strategy should not be to conceal the truth. The strategies I've outlined and that we are going through is to get to the ends of justice. Our strategy is not to conceal the truth. So if the easy strategy is that I won't take the witness box because I do not want to open the can of worms that the people of this country will see and begin to question why I conducted my elections this way, then that strategy is inimical to the growth of our uh, democracy. So the strategy should be that that strategy should go to ensure that there's justice. That strategy should ensure that it goes to uh, protect our democracy. But a strategy that seeks to conceal the truth of what happened on 7th December or 9th December during the declaration, it's not a strategy that is beneficial to the people of this country. So our people know that, and they know that it's because she knows that when she goes into the witness box, she will be ripped open, and that the kinds of information that will come out will be mind-boggling. She thinks that she shouldn't go into the witness box. So that has made our people to come to a firm conclusion that something actually went wrong. Is that why 
I am reading in one of the papers, and indeed I have the Republic Press, and on the front page it says that the petitioners to picket at Jubilee House Supreme Court EC headquarters on February 24 for Jim Mensah's removal. Is that connected? So now you see that my description of the election petition as a political legal petition is right. So these are people who are watching, not lawyers. This is not from the party? I'm saying that these are people who are watching, Ghanaians who are watching, party members who are watching, and I've decided that they would go onto the streets. But, but that's not right, is it? You, you haven't absorbed uh, this process. We, we, we haven't ended the process that you started. I'm just trying to tell you that there's a legal aspect which we are doing in court, and there's a politicians who would also do these things. Would this help your course, though? You can. Well, what the politicians do help what you do in court? The politicians have a right to demonstrate under the Constitution. They have a right. And there's nowhere in the Constitution that says that one process should start and end before you start another process. So if the politicians think that they want to demonstrate, they want to pick it, and if the Constitution allows that, as I've indicated, there's nothing wrong with that. What's your understanding of why they want to pick it at the Supreme Court? They are watching. They are watching the proceedings, and I don't know what might have egged them. I read this yesterday, and I saw a police um, letter uh, trying to stop them from demonstrating. I say that the police has no such right. The police have no right to stop people from demonstrating. What the police can do is to go to court and secure an injunction against them. But the police, under our laws, have no right to stop any group of people from demonstrating. And so, my, so, my advice is that that letter from the police should be treated with contempt. Yeah, but isn't it a bit confusing because you're challenging the validity of a presidential election as declared on the 9th of December, correct? Uh, but then this is towards the removal of the Electoral Commission boss. And I'm saying that, and you are right, it's not about matters in the court. This is about matters of removal. Matters of removal of the Jemensa is not one of the issues in court. Yeah, so why would they want to pick it at the courts? So, so, so the, their demonstration is not even linked to the matters in court. Their demonstration is linked to the president having received a petition and being a conveyor belt this time round has refused to convey the letter to the appropriate quarters. But in the case of... Uh, Charlotte was there, he quickly conveyed it. And so they are saying that why is the president sitting on that petition? And so they are demonstrating against that. So I, I, I just want to appreciate the connection with the Supreme There's Court. no connection because that's why I'm saying that this is a political legal matter. The politicians too who are watching are also putting in place certain mechanisms, which is removal of okay, I, I appreciate that. I just I'm just curious about the venue as in the Supreme Court where they intern picketing. That's, that's what I'm asking. What have they got to do with the removal of, or not of, of the EC chair? No, I, I cannot give you details because okay. I'm not a member of that group. All right. Uh, yeah, so okay. that, the details. There's another issue, and uh, this is on the front page of the Daily Guide, and this is uh, Supreme Court cites Ayeni for contempt. I would not have brought it up uh, because yesterday, Sami Jemfi, the communications officer of the party, dealt with that matter, except that I see it again in the Daily Guide this morning, and they are quite straight that they got information from the registrar. So again, maybe there's been an update after Sami Jemfi's communication. Uh, is there anything like this in terms of the court looking for Dr. Dominic Kayeni uh, to serve him with some court documents? You see, there's a warring trend that is unfolding if it has not already it has not already been in the public domain the mpp lawyers have a tendency and these are young young lawyers who were just called to the bar have a tendency of inciting the court against the ndc lawyers and so they will come out during the press conferences and begin to highlight 
certain comments and take them out of context, highlight them, and make them look like the NDC lawyers are engaging contemptuous acts. And I cite two of them, Kojo Pongkroma and Nanabi, these two. This is not how lawyers have been trained to behave towards each other. We are each other's keepers. And so for them to persist in this act is most appalling. It was Kojo Pongkroma and uh, Nanabi who highlighted the case of Dominic Ayena. Now, they don't stop at that. They even go to attack the personality of the NDC lawyers. After Nanabi say that Chachiketa is persistent in what he's doing because he wants to write a book after this. I said, do you know the person you are talking about? Did, did you hear him say that? Asempa, do you know the person you are talking about? If you are minded, go and ask Nana Kufado, the president, how diligent Chachikata is. In the case of Tufu and Attorney General, when Akufado was handling the matter and it was becoming difficult, he had to invite in Chachikata. And this is Akufado who told us in a class when Professor Kumado invited him to come and talk to us when I was in the law So, you're, so you're clearly... I, my, I, I am, I am disgusted at the conduct of these two lawyers, these two young lawyers. They should learn from their seniors. Okay. Uh, let's bring the conversation to a close. I want to ask, have your side filed your written address? No, but you heard yesterday, our lead counsel made a point that uh, because of these applications that have either been filed or were about to be filed, we did not file our witness statements. And he made that clear to the court. The court then said that they will come back on Monday to deal with all these matters. Um, on Monday, you know that there's a return date for the application for review in respect of the decision of the Supreme Court not to allow us reopen our case. And so, and we've attached to that application a stay of proceedings. So that has been filed in court and the return date is on Monday. So, so we, is that different from the review or both applications are one? No, no. Stay of proceedings comes before the application for review. And, so, and so you have a, the, the Monday's date on that as well? As, as well. Okay. So both will be taken that same day. And then I'm sure they will deal with... So what are you staying exactly? Which part of the, the proceedings? The proceedings where they said we should file with written statements, closing addresses. Okay. Yes. That's a court order. And that is a process ongoing in court. So you need to arrest it. Okay. And so then, because if this application succeeds, it will impact on the main case. Okay. So uh, let me understand what you're doing. It's not as though you want the court to stay the proceedings and hear the review application and make a determination. That's not. It's to hold the order for the parties to file their written addresses. It is both. So to stay proceedings will mean that because there's an order that will file our written addresses, it will stay that process. And then secondly, for them to hear our application for review. So it, it plays that double barrel rule. To hear our application for review. And if that is determined, we can now come back and go through the process again. So that is mm. what is happening. Okay. Is, this, is Monday the last review application pending? Yes, to the best of my knowledge. Uh, the only application for review and the only decision now left hanging that we are aggrieved about is the decision that um, we will not be allowed to open our case. So that is the only decision now that is hanging, which we are aggrieved about and which we want a review. Okay, are you, are you giving the court another reason? Because I, I remember in the original ruling, they said that uh, they were baffled by the fact that you wanted to reopen so you can subpoena the EC chairperson. Yes, and we thought that um, 
in that ruling, you remember in that ruling where we said we wanted to reopen our case, they sort of described a hostile witness by going to define who a hostile witness is in the Black Law Dictionary. We are saying that, look, we have a, a statute. We have the Evidence Act, which defines who an adverse witness is. An adverse witness is not the one who is already in the witness box. An adverse witness can be your opponent who is against your case, who can be brought in. So we are saying that that ruling where the hostile witness was seen as only a witness in the uh, witness box, and then defining it per the uh, Black Law Dictionary is not what we think should have been the case. Okay. It should have been under the uh, Evidence Act. Okay. Yes. All right. Listen, Ms. Amalba, you have another bridge to cross. We will be following the processes on Monday. I can only wish you the very best. Thank you for Thank you me. for coming. Yeah. Uh, stay with us. We're crossing over and roving from the University uh, for Professional Studies campus. Manuel Kranting is reporting because there was a very interesting directive uh, that the university issued recently. Manuel will tell us all about it. Hello, Manuel. Oh, we, uh, Manuel cannot quite join us right now. We have to take a breather. But there was a, a uh, communication or uh, a release for a prescribed dress code. Uh, there's some things that the university doesn't want to see the young ladies 